Hey guys, Prince Wisdom here and I'm back with another episode of Debunk Therapy where I take some shitty fad and show you why it's, well, shit. And today we will be debunking... Mike Chen's evidence for the Hollow Earth Theory. Now, the Hollow Earth Theory has been a thing for centuries but only recently seems to have gained momentum along with all the crappy fads of this decade. Keep in mind that this is not a video debunking the hollow earth theory per se, but want to show you guys how wrong Chen's claims are. If you want to have the hollow earth theory debunked in full, just go on YouTube and there is a whole plethora of videos debunking it over and over again by numerous people. Now, I don't mind small time YouTubers talking about stuff like this. I mean, if there is a demand in the market, there will always be someone to feed the supply of their shitty delusions. However, when the large YouTubers who can affect a huge audience say things like this without even verifying the quote-unquote clues that prove the stuff they're talking about, someone needs to tell the people the absolute truth. Let me show you how poorly researched his facts are. So let's jump straight into it. Here, Mike Chen uses the ringwoodite infused with water as a proof that there are oceans beneath the mantle. Well, that's wonderful, isn't it? Let's all just hold hands and go off for a jolly good swim, shall we? No, ringwoodite doesn't contain water, but hydroxide ions. We're not talking about some ocean of liquid water just sitting in this transition layer. We're talking about incredibly high pressure concentrations of non-liquid ringwoodite that contain water in the form of hydroxide ions. Hydroxide does not equal water. The scientists that published this article say that if all the hydroxide ions can be released from ringwoodite, then the resulting volume of water could be comparable to two or three times of that on the surface. Man, Chen then goes on to say how that it was not just fringe scientists that believed in the hollow earth theory, but even well-known scientists illustrating Halley and Euler as examples. Okay, let me put this in point form. Halley came up with the concentric shells theory in order to explain strange compass readings. He envisaged the atmosphere inside as luminous and possibly inhabited and speculated that the escaping gas caused the aurora borealis. Note, this was in 1692. And of course, we have so much of evidence that came after that. I mean, this is 2016, isn't it? Euler, however, is wrongly quoted in this situation because he never explicitly states that he agrees with the hollow earth theory. In one of his books, he simply discussed what would happen if you drilled a hole all the way through the earth and dropped a stone through it. And him supporting Halley's theory is a huge misinterpretation. In fact, contrary to what the proponents of the hollow earth theory would like to believe, Euler openly criticizes Halley and his idea of concentric shells in a later volume of the same book. <laughs> Alright, I am going to assume that you already know who Admiral Byrd is and how he became famous for his so-called secret North Pole expedition in 1947. All of this is suggested under the assumption that his so-called secret diary is actually true. So let's disprove that. Keep in mind that this so-called secret diary was of an expedition in 1947. In 1928, Byrd published a report of his 1926 expedition where he says this. When our calculations showed us to be about an hour from the North Pole, I noticed through the cabin window a bad leak in the oil tank of the starboard motor. When I took the wheel again, I kept my eyes glued onto the oil leak and the oil pressure indicator. Now let's see the so-called secret diary from 1947 in page 2 where he says, 0740 hours. Note, slight oil leak in starboard engine. Oil pressure indicator seems normal, however. Well, would you look at that? What are the odds of Admiral Byrd having the exact same problem with the same engine on two different flights 11 years apart? But it gets worse from there. In 1937, MGN created a motion picture named Lost Horizon. In that movie, the main actor, Ronald Coleman, has an audience with the Dalai Lama in Shagrila, a lost city in Tibet. Here, Dalai Lama says, A dark time is coming. You, my son will live through the storm. You will preserve the fragrance of our history and add to it a touch of your own mind. Beyond that, my vision weakens. But I see in the great distance a new world starting in the ruins, but in hopefulness, seeking its lost and legendary treasures, and they will all be here. 
my son, hidden behind the mountains under the blue moon, preserved as if by miracle. Strangely enough, in the so-called Seer Diary of 1947, Admiral Bird meets the master of the Ariani, the mystical Hollow Earth people, and the master says to him, Yes, my son, the dark ages that will come for your race will cover the earth like a pall, but I believe that some of your race will live through the storm. Beyond that, I cannot say. We see a great distance, a new world stirring from the ruins of your race, seeking its lost and legendary treasures. And they will be here, my son, safe in our keeping. <laughs> now, I don't know about you, but it seems like either the master of the Ariane liked to spend his free time watching MJ movies, or both these are examples of massive cases of plagiarism and remongering. Long story short, Admiral Richard Bird went on an expedition in 1926 and not 1947. And the so-called secret diary? Simply a sensationalized work of terrible plagiarism. This is one of the most easiest to debunk because it's more or less a fairy tale or a legend akin to the pagans and Robin Hood. However, accounts are even more conflicting than other legends because depending on whom you read, the green children first appear during the reign of Stephen or during the reign of Henry II. The story is so distorted that even the chronicles that record them can't come to a proper conclusion. I can't believe that this is used as an example at all. This is simply a verbal myth passed down from generation to generation during the lineage of Makushis. There is zero evidence of even such a journey, let alone an underground world ever recorded. I'm just going to show a few examples that the so-called letter by the attested Karl Unger is fake. The German word das, which also means this or that or which, as spelled here, didn't exist before the orthography reforms of 1996. In 1947, the correct spelling would have been the following. But, for the native German speaker, however, this is blatantly obvious right off the bat. Secondly, from the German records, yes, there was an actual vessel called the U-209. However, on board there was no crew member called Karl Unger. But there was a Karl Mudinger who was listed as dead on July 2nd, 1943 as a member of the crew. Oh yeah, and the major deal breaker? The actual U-209 did not disappear during this so-called Arctic expedition, but as confirmed by both German and Allied records, sunk on its 12th petrol in May 1943 by an RAF Catalina. Oh, and on a side note, yeah, there were no survivors. And finally, the truth on the surface that I'm sure no one realized, if this boat was lost, in any sense, how did the damned letter end up on the internet? And to be honest, this was my first time really researching and looking into the theory that the Earth could be hollow. Anyway, I'm not bashing Mark Chen, guys. I'm simply saying that in this instance, his facts are poorly researched and misinformed, and he simply ended up misinforming a large audience. As always, I encourage everyone just to keep an open mind and judge for yourselves. As I said before, if you really want to verify that the Hollow Earth theory is false, a quick Google search or a YouTube search can produce fantastic results. Don't believe anything anyone tells you. Always do your own research. And that includes me. As always guys, I hope you enjoyed the video. And if you did, don't forget to let me know by leaving a thumbs up. Feel free to leave any questions on the comments below. Subscribe for more videos and check out my Facebook and Twitter pages by clicking on these links. And until next time. Bye.